Hey everyone, it's Johnny, your Independent Sensi Consultant. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to start diving into the new fragrances and returning fragrances for the Fall Winter 2021 Scentsy Catalog. Today's video, as the title suggests, is gonna suggest. I just changed how I pronounced that word. Uh, as the title says, we are gonna be talking about the 10 new fragrances that are coming to our catalog. I have not smelled them before. I'm very excited to smell them with you guys, and I have bars of each of them here with me today. So we are going to do that. We'll read the descriptions and talk about first opinions on cold because I haven't warmed them, obviously, either. Uh, and then stay tuned for future videos because I will be breaking down all the different scent categories uh, for the fall winter 2021 catalog. I just won't do them all in one video because that would take like two hours and ain't nobody got time for that. So least of all me. That being said, let's dive right in. So I have all of the scents here and I actually have their descriptions and we're just going to go down the list. I'm going to read the description and the name and then we're going to sniff it out and see what we think about it. So the first one is in the woodsy category, and it is called Blue Sage and Tonka. It's blue. Who would have guessed? Revel in the richness of midnight sage and black lavender over the sultry sweetness of Tonka bean. So I like lavender scents. Not like in love with them, but I like them. I do like Tonka bean. And sage could take it or leave it. So let's find out. This is, I think it's going to be like a cologne scent. Oh yeah, definitely like a cologne, masculine sort of scent. Um, I pick up on the sage and the lavender. It's more of a deeper lavender. I mean, I don't know specifically what black lavender smells like, but it's not as light or herbaceous as some of the other lavenders that I've smelled. The Midnight Sage, I'm not usually a sage person. Like sometimes it, it has to be like the right combination. Otherwise sage just kind of doesn't do anything for me. Um, but this one is really nice. So it's like a muted sage. It's there, but it's not like a traditional bright, what we think of when I think of sage. As far as Tonka bean, I do smell like a hint of that cherry's finish. Um, Tonka gives like a vanilla cherry enhancement sort of scent a lot of times to fragrances. And it's there. It's, oh, it's very good. Oh, ho, 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 this is a good scent. I like this even more now I'm smelling like the bottom of the bar. So sometimes a tip, if you smell the bar from the top, some of the oils settle lower down in the bar and you don't get the quite the full throw of what it might smell like. So we can pop it out and smell the bottom. Yeah, I'm getting... I'm getting all those notes. There is a slight soapiness to this. That could be the lavender, that could be the sage, it could be both. It's not the tonka bean giving a soapiness. Um, but it reminds me of like a really nice men's cologne or body wash. More in the cologne, maybe body spray. It's it's not quite aquatic enough to be like full on body wash. But this is like, this is also not like one of those ridiculously overpowered, overwhelming, gross, like Axe body sprays that like people overspray and then their whole house smells like Axe and the whole block smells like Axe. This is like a more refined cologne smell. Like this, if this was a cologne, I would wear this. Ooh, that's so good. Now, it'll be interesting to see how it performs and throws. Obviously, I don't have any idea or gauge on those yet. Um, but fresh out of the first sniffs, this is definitely a possible club contender for myself. All right, next one we're going to talk about is also in the woodsy category. It's called Cashmere and Corduroy. Wrap yourself up in the coziness of creamy vanilla, Sicilian bergamot, and cashmere sandalwood. So we've got vanilla, cashmere sandalwood. It's kind of a very traditional kind of blend. But then we have Sicilian bergamot, which I'm not sure what the difference between like a traditional bergamot and Sicilian will be. But I know bergamot usually adds like a citrusy, limey, sometimes zesty sort of vibe. So this is the bar. It's like a deep, like dusty-ish pink. Let's find out. 
All right, so right out of the gate, I get vanilla and I get cashmere. And sandalwood. Not so much on the bergamot. Oh, but when I like warm it with my finger, I smell a whole lot of bergamot. Hello, bergamot. Mm. So I was like very like loving the scent and then the bergamot kind of crept in and I was kind of like, oh, that's different. Let's see what the bottom of the bar smells like. <sighs> yeah. So I do get all the scent notes. It's very cashmere-y. So that's like that cozy, but also slightly mus musky sort of scent quality. Sandalwood is there. There's almost like a slight smokiness to this scent. Like it's not quite a smoky scent, but it's like the, the musk note is almost on the like borderline to if it got any more on that sort of rich note, it might turn into more of a smoky sort of side note. I do get the vanilla. I don't mind the vanilla part. I don't mind the sandalwood. I don't mind the cashmere. I don't know how I feel about the bergamot in here. I think it will, I think it will depend on how prominent it ends up being when you warm it or when I warm it. Um, because when I get just a burst of bergamot in the middle of it, it's like this weird limey grapefruit almost like hint on top of like a cozy vanilla sandalwood sort of vibe, which is kind of weird to me. But when it's like blended in with the scent, it actually kind of like lightens the heaviness that a cashmere sort of scent tends to have. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how, like, if this, if the bergamot in this scent ends up being very heavy, I'm not going to like the scent as much as I would like to. It'll be kind of like a, mmm, that's okay. But if it just kind of, like, brings up the other scent notes and adds a little spice to the mix, if you will, then I think I will really enjoy the scent. So this, this could go one of two ways for me. But it does, I do get all the scent notes that are supposedly in here, so... That's a good thing. Next we have, number three is cinnamon buttercream. It's in the bakery category. We know how I feel about cinnamon, but buttercream may make the difference because if it's like a sweet cinnamon, I might like this one. So this is described as Italian buttercream and creamy mascarpone scooped over cinnamon cake. Combined sugar, spice, and everything nice. So the cinnamon component to this is a cake rather than cinnamon red hot or cinnamon whatever. So that may, may be the game changer for you. So light, light tan color wax. Well, it's very cinnamon, but it is a sweet bakery cinnamon. So I actually don't mind it. And you definitely get like the Italian buttercream. This is like a buttery cinnamon roll. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is like giving me, making me wanna like go to Cinnabon right now and have those like a Cinnabon topped with a bunch of icing, but actually with buttercream instead of icing. What does the bottom of this smell like? This is, this is, I'm pleasantly surprised cause I'm not really a bakery person. Oh, that's gotta be the mascarpone. I was like, what does that smell? It's like, oh, wait a minute. This is very much a butter, it's, it's buttercream with cinnamon rather than cinnamon with hint of buttercream. Like this is, like if you know what vanilla bean buttercream is, it's pretty much like the buttercream and then vanilla somewhere in there interspersed. This is kind of like the cinnamon variant of that, but it's a sweet cinnamon. It's not a red hot. And I'm kind of here for it, <laughs> honestly. I'm not usually big on like sweet or like 
borderline cloying sense, but the butter note in this kind of like mellows the, the straight up sugary quality. Oh, this is, if this was like a, a cinnamon roll in front of me, I would be like devouring this. Let's just put it that way. So I'm pleasantly surprised. I will get back to you when I warm this. I feel like this is gonna perform really well because cinnamon tends to throw and buttercream is a pretty powerful scent in general. Um, I'll have to let you know how this smells when I warm it or how I feel about it, but not bad on cold. All right, next we have eucalyptus wreath. That's number four. And this is in the fresh category. This is fresh eucalyptus, is woven with juniper and adorned with frosted mint. So eucalyptus, juniper, and mint. Green, very eucalyptus colored. Let's see what we got going on here. Whoop, right out of the gate you get uh, a minty eucalyptus. Undeniable that it's eucalyptus, but it is it is a fresh eucalyptus. It's not like a stale, herby, like medicinal eucalyptus. So that's a positive. The frosted mint is not a spearmint. So it's not really a sweet mint, but it's also not really a peppermint. It's just like a, a very refreshing, like almost fresh mint with like an, an icier chill to it. So that's also positive. Like we're, we're, we're working with the fresh vibes. It's in the fresh category. Cause at first when I saw that there was juniper in this, I was like, oh, this is not gonna be fresh. This is gonna be woodsy. You do get a woodsy, like juniper, like sort of earthy quality to it. So it's not just straight up sinus clearing eucalyptus uh, and mint because those can both be very overpowering. It kind of mutes them a little bit so that they're like, oh, this is fresh and, you know, zesty, if you will. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by the scent. I didn't think I was gonna like this. I'm not usually a huge on eucalyptus scents. Juniper I like. Um, mint, again, I like, but it depends on the type of mint. So like spearmints or winter greens, I'm not as huge of a fan of. I'm more like the peppermint uh, or fresh mint sort of person. Yeah, this is definitely a fresh scent. Uh, and it's, it's, honestly, it gives me a little bit of, it's like a distant cousin of Just Breathe. So if you like that, like, as Just Breathe is more a little bit more medicinal eucalyptus from what I remember. But if you like that, those sort of fresh quality scents, I think you'll really enjoy the scent. All right, number five is Graham Cracker Crunch. Caramelized Graham Cracker layered with crunchy peanut butter and creamy vanilla bean. Okay, so I like eating peanuts. I don't know if I want my house to smell like peanuts. Um, and we all know that I'm not a huge fan of caramel stuff anyways, in sense, at least. Eating it, that's a different story, but, and then vanilla's fine. So let's find out. This is a tan, light tan, sort of colored wax. Hmm. Okay. Um, you do get peanut butter. And you do get like a caramel note to this. I don't know if I could call it caramelized graham cracker. Oh, what is that scent? Whoa. Whoa. <sighs> Hang on, where's my Kleenex? Pardon the noise. Oh man, mm. Ooh, yeah, that's like, that's, mm, I don't think I like this one. <laughs> oh, that's like straight up like whiffing the peanut butter jar. You, if you like peanut butter, this is undeniably peanut butter scented. And then there's like a weird, like, I know they say caramelized graham cracker. I'm kind of getting like burnt graham cracker. 
I think there's a vanilla in here because there's like a creamy quality to it. But because this peanut butter scent is just like, holy mackerel. Okay, that, I am gonna go with, uh, this is not a vibe for me personally. I'm gonna warm it because I will give everything at least one go around, if not two, you know, we'll get through the bar. There's only been like one bar in the history of bars, maybe two, that I couldn't just, could not stomach. Um, and I think one was a Scentsy one and one was like some random store wax. But anyways, this is very peanut buttery, without a doubt. Like it's almost like peanut butter, slightly burnt graham cracker. I, I sort of get the caramel note, but it's kind of like, almost like a um, borderline burnt caramel note. I don't know. I feel like just regular graham cracker would have been fine. And then vanilla bean, it's in there, but it's, it's not the major player. Like this is, this is like peanut butter surprise. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one. On cold, this is probably my least favorite so far, by a long shot. Hopefully, um, it will surprise me or be not quite as um, pungent when I warm it. Next, number six, we have Harvest Blessings. Radiant apple, not just any old apple, radiant apple, spiced pumpkin, and smooth oak embody everything you love about autumn. And this is in the spice category. Nice orange color. There's definitely spices in this. I do get a very, I don't wanna use the word radiant because I think that's silly, but I do get a very bright apple scent. It's not like a Johnny Appleseed juicy watery apple scent. It's kind of like a, um, like a crisp, like a crisp gala, maybe a Macintosh. Well, no, because Johnny Appleseed is a Macintosh. It's probably more like a gala apple, if I had to, like, guess. Or like a golden apple, rather than necessarily like a tart green Granny Smith or like a juicy Johnny Appleseed Macintosh. Like this is like a gala apple or like a golden, golden apple. It's like sweet um, and tangy, but not tart like a green apple would be. I do get spice, a mix of spice. It kind of gives me that like pumpkin spice vibe that, you know, everyone in falls all like pumpkin spice and everything nice that is definitely in here so the spice pumpkin pumpkin spice whatever you want to call it that's there smooth oak i'm trying to find the smooth oak in this let me see if i don't destroy this bar as i try to open it it's like no you will not smell the bottom of the bar ah there's the oak I don't know what they mean by smooth oak. I mean, it's not an earthy oak. So usually I equate um, oak scents to be a little heavier and like earthen dirt sort of vibes. So this is like maybe like a smoothly finished, like a refined piece of oak as opposed to like you're out in the moss and dirt in like the patch of oak trees. But you do get that woodsy sort of vibe. I actually really like the bar more on the bottom because I get less of the pumpkin spice beating me in the face. And I get more of this like golden apple woodsy note. Ooh, so if this if this bar warms up like this on, on the bottom side more, I might actually be pretty okay with this scent. But if it's more like the top and like the pumpkin spice or whatever kind of takes the the cake for this, uh, I might not be so fond of it. Um, but it's, it's definitely, I'll give them credit. Aside from the graham cracker one, so far these have all been pretty decent scents or pretty awesome scents. So that's that one. Let's move on. We got four more to go through. Next one is a pomegranate Prosecco, which is in the fruity category. 
This is described as delectable rosé berry and pomegranate. Add an effervescent splash to a flute of pink Prosecco. And this is like a like pretty in pink, pomegranate pink, whatever color. Here we go. Pomegranate Prosecco. Well, you definitely get pomegranate. There is no doubt that there's pomegranate in here. I have no idea what a rosé berry is supposed to smell like, so if I could tell you what it was, then I would know whether or not it was in here. But I also do get that, like, effervescent sort of champagne kind of vibe to this scent. I don't know if it's going to be, like, effervescent in the way, like, the, the We're All Mad Here Alice in Wonderland scent was effervescent. Or if it's going to be just more of a muted, like, Prosecco scent. But it definitely lives up to the name. There's definitely pomegranate. There's definitely some sort of berry, rosé berry, whatever that's supposed to smell like. But you get berries and booze. <laughs> Or Prosecco, I should say. I mean, I would love to drink this. I don't know if I want my home to smell like it, but if you like pomegranate, you will definitely like this scent. If you like like those sort of, I want to say like strawberry champagne truffle or something that we had once upon a time that had like a champagne sort of note to it, or... Um, or if you, if you were fond of We're All Mad here, this might kind of lean towards that a little bit. There is that kind of effervescent quality, but it's not... I don't know how prominent that's going to be when it warms, or if it's just going to be, like, overwhelmed by pomegranate. But on cold, it is what it says it is. All right. Three more. Last three. Let's get through these. Scarlet Sunflower is next. This is in the fruity category as well. This is Juicy Apple and a hint of red cranberry are brightened by a scarlet sunflower turning to face the sun. So we're getting rid of Here Comes the Sunflower from the Spring Summer Catalog, and then we're going to have the Scarlet Sunflower in the Fall Winter Catalog. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see what this one smells like. Apple, cranberry, and sunflower. Okay, this is a lighter scent. Ooh, I don't know if I can smell anything. Ah, there we go. This is a juicy apple. With a hint of tartness. It's probably the cranberry. And then like mix with here comes the sunflower. <laughs> So if you like the scent, here comes the sunflower, and you added like a juicy apple and a hint of red tart cranberry, that's what you'd have in this scent. So it's like a richer, more fruity floral. Um, that almost is a little bit more well balanced than here comes the sunflower is. It's definitely more of a autumnal scent than a spring summer scent. When I was first saw it, I was like, uh, but no, it definitely is more autumnal. You do get the apple. It is a softer scent on just sniff, like compared to some of these other ones that just were like, whoa, hello, good morning, Baltimore. This one was kind of like, where are you? I have a feeling this is going to perform lighter, but you never know. Um, but it is a nice combination, and like I said, it's kind of like if Here Comes the Sunflower had a juicy apple note and a hint of, like, a tart red berry, that would be the same thing. So they just basically did it that way, and I'm curious to see how this performs. But not bad. I don't mind that one. All right, our last two. The next one is called Spiced Ember Glow. This is in the cinnamon, the, the spice category. I mean, there is cinnamon in it. Uh, spiced Ember Glow is described as smoked apple and toasted vanilla over cinnamon embers offer a warm and inviting escape. Dark red burgundy color. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hold up. Let me pull out the... Let me pull the bar out of the clamshell. Get a better whiff. This... This is a smokier, more cinnamon leaning, and it's red hot cinnamon, not like sweet cinnamon. This is a smoky, red hot cinnamon leaning version of apple s'mores. So if you liked our scent apple s'mores and thought it was nice, but maybe too sweet at times, or you wanted more like rich um, or heartier, more like biting spice to it, as opposed to just being a sweet tooth thing with like apple, vanilla, and graham cracker. This is like that version. This is the red hot cinnamon, like cinnamon bear red hot cinnamon. And then like an apple that has been smoked, so you still get like that char smoky quality to it. You don't really get a whole lot of the vanilla because that's toasted as well. Because you have like smoked apple, toasted vanilla, cinnamon ember. So there's a lot of like... I'm surprised that this isn't in the woodsy category. I mean, it's very spicy, so I can see why it's in spice too. But if you don't like red hot cinnamon in any capacity, you're probably not going to be fond of this one. But if you liked, uh, like I said, if you liked apple s'mores and wanted it to be more spicy or something deeper or smokier uh, or more heavy, uh, try this one. I don't think I'm going to like it because I finally came around to apple s'mores and I was kind of like, well, it's not my favorite, but it's not bad. This is like, if you gave me red hot cinnamon and threw it in there, <laughs> and was just like, ha ha, I found the one scent that you really don't like and put it into a bar that otherwise would have been okay. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna like this, but if you like red hot cinnamon, you may wanna try this, because I get a, quite a bit of that in there. All right, well, that's enough of that one. Whew. My poor nose. All right, the last one we have is Tinselberry. This is in the fruity category. It's described as strawberry and cranberry dipped in cinnamon and sweet sugar for a little extra sparkle. So much cinnamon. Can we not have cinnamon in every scent? For, for goodness sake, okay? I know cinnamon is like a popular scent, but come on now. Mmm, okay. I get strawberry. It smells like artificial strawberry to me. Although I feel like most scents of strawberry smell like artificial scents of strawberry to me, so that's not really saying much. Ooh, I do get like a little bit of a cranberry note. Mostly strawberry. I do get cinnamon. I do get like a sugar note. It's, it's kind of like, it's not sweet cinnamon. Like it's not a bakery sweet cinnamon, but it's not full on red hot cinnamon. It's like somewhere in the middle between the two. And it's being muted by the supposed uh, sweet sugar note. So it's kind of like, strawberries or artificial strawberries with a hint of tartness, some like middle of the road cinnamon and like an ounce of sugar to slightly mellow out the cinnamon. It does lean towards more of a red hot versus a sweet cinnamon though. Yeah, the more I'm smelling it, the more I'm getting like red hot being muted rather than bakery sweet. Because I think if you had bakery sweet cinnamon in here, this would have been just like too nauseating to deal with. So that 
cinnamon is a little bit more forceful to kind of bring you out of like the land of sweetness. Um, I don't know how I feel about a strawberry a cinnamon swirl scent, if you will. Um, it's not my least favorite of the new ones, but it's certainly not winning anything in terms of awards for me personally. But if you like strawberry scents or berry scents, you may want to pick this up and try it. Just be aware that there is a cinnamon note in it. It's not the dominant scent. I think strawberry is definitely the dominant part of this scent, but it's definitely present, at least on cold. So something to keep in mind. And that is the 10. So let's, let's kind of review. So my least favorite three out of this bunch would be uh, Graham Cracker Crunch, which was like peanut butter overload and then like burnt Graham Cracker to me. Uh, Tinselberry, which was like artificial strawberry candy meets red hot cinnamon and like more sweetness. And Spiced Ember Glow, which was apple s'mores. That was a very Midwestern apple. Kiat and hat and things. I'm from Michigan originally, so every now and then I have a weird A. But uh, this is like apple s'mores with a red hot cinnamon note and some extra smoke to add to the delight. Surprisingly, though, I will say I like this more than what is it? Um, we had Autumn Sunset that I don't know why it. Keep it just keeps coming back in the fall when you catalogs. It's just like oh, gross. Anyways, um, ones that I'm not sure about would be Scarlet Sunflower. I'm not sure if it's going to be a very strong performer, but it does smell quite nice. Uh, pomegranate Prosecco. I don't know if this is going to lean to the effervescent quality or it's just going to be like tart pomegranate with a weird like boozy note to it. Um. Harvest Blessings, I like it, but if this pumpkin spice note overwhelms the apple and oak component to this, I feel like it's just going to be another one of our generic sort of, well, not our generic, but just another one of our like fall sort of spice and apples and pumpkins blend, you know, it's like, that's why I always like critique and, and complain a little bit about any brand that's like cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon when it comes to fall. Cause it's like, there are so many other spices you could use. Clove, coriander, um, do something crazy, put cumin in there or something. Like, like let's do something crazy. So everyone's like, whoa, why did I ever not think about that? Um, and then the ones that I think are my top picks are Blue Sage and Tonka. Very nice masculine scent, woodsy. Eucalyptus wreath, very fresh and refreshing. Cinnamon buttercream, pleasantly surprised. It's a sweet cinnamon. It's kind of like giving me cinnamon, cinnamon vibes. And then cashmere and corduroy, as long as that bergamot behaves, uh, this scent could also be a winner, winner chicken dinner. So. so these will all be available starting August 1st for purchase and they will be available through the fall winter season uh, to either add to your club, stock up on, try and see if you like all of the above. So that is it for the 10 new releases. Hopefully this is helpful. Have you smelled any of them personally? Have you warmed any of them yet? If you have like a sample or were able to get the consultant kit, if you are a consultant, let me know. What do you like? What don't you like? Um, did you feel any of these scent descriptions that I kind of came up with uh, match what you smelled? Let me know. I'm always curious. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up. And if you are new here, consider subscribing. And I will see you all in our next part to this video. Take care, guys. Bye.